Hello out there, uh, another night of our Spiritus program on Kardec Radio Facebook page. Welcome everyone on May 7th, uh, 12th, not 17th, May 12th, 2019. And we are here to talk about Spiritism. And where did Spiritism start? It's all on this book, Alan Kardec. Again, you can go on my blog, nwspiritism.com, click on his picture. It will take you to the EDICI bookstore. You can buy all of his books. You can also get his books on PDF. Of course, I say this every time. That's how I started. And you can get his books. You can get books by Chico Xavier, Devaldo Franco, Yvonne Pierre, all wonderful uh, spiritist mediums who are bringing us many messages from high spirits to give us more information about spiritism. Because after all, Spiritism is a dynamic doctrine. It's spiritism wasn't just say, okay, Alan Kardec, he wrote the spirit, uh, he codified the Spirit's book. He brought together spirit messages on the gospel of, you know, according to spiritism in his other books. Um, you're done, right? You don't say anything else. No, spiritism is dynamic. It's always more information. More information brought to us by Leon Denis who came uh, medium after Chico, uh, after Alan Kardec. Chico Xavier bringing us more information. Jan, uh, Yvonne Pierre bringing us more information. Reverend G. Val Owen in England bringing us more information. So the spirit world has told us they bring the information to us at the level of technology and culture that we can comprehend what they are telling us. Therefore, Yes, many people are right when they say, well, the messages in the uh, Old Testament are pretty cruel. And, but those were fashioned for the humans of those days. They were given, they were given directive. And they said, if you didn't do the directive, you know, they, they treat you like a five-year-old. They slapped you on the hand, right? So now they're telling us more and more. This is the beauty of spiritism. It's always more information. It'll be more information in the future as we can absorb it. So tonight, we are carrying on with Spiritism 101, which uh, we are going through just to give everyone a survey of Spiritism. So as I talk from chapter to chapter, I'm not going to be exhaustive of anything. What I think I'm doing is after we're done with 101, then we'll go down deeper into other subjects like reincarnation, uh, heaven, the umbrella, the lower zone, or the umbrella is uh, named in Portuguese. Uh, those other types of things we will talk more about, and I'll still label it as a series of Spiritism 101, but we'll get deeper and deeper into the subject so someone can take, uh, you know, take this uh, area that we're doing, you know, and look at my subgroup on the YouTube channel of Spiritism 101, and they can go through all of them and learn more and more as they need to. So hopefully people can use this in their Spiritist meetings or wherever they think they, you know, will serve the best. So um, let's get started. Oh, before I get started, is please subscribe to my YouTube channel, my BitTube channel, share this, uh, share this, dialogue with you this facebook page uh Kardec radio facebook page if you can that would be wonderful share it with your friends and your other groups on facebook and also tell people about Kardec radio i'm also live right now here at eight o'clock real time seven o'clock eastern four o'clock pacific all time zones in between around the world we are live every sunday afternoon or night depending on where you are you maybe early morning we've had people from all around the world that listen to the show so it's very interesting also if you have questions email me I have more and more people emailing me and talking to me all the time so let's get into it we're now we're on the area of spiritism 101 is how does the spirit world help us and they do now before i learned about spiritism i thought we were just you know these humans and we were on a we were on a kind of a far off planet you know beautiful planet but no one really cared about us god was far away boy was i incorrect i was totally wrong not only does god love us and we're completely within the bosom of of his love but as well as the spirit world 
around the earth, which is led by Jesus Christ as far as helping guide the earth. He guides other planets besides, but he's also guiding the earth with loving and care. And there's a whole army of spirits that watch out for us besides just our guardian angel. There are other manifests of spirits that help guide the human race and help guide each one of us on our predestined plan to learn here on earth. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. I can't emphasize enough, the spirit world is concerned with each and every one of us. You are not alone. Don't ever think, don't let your friends, don't let yourself be depressed. Think of any suicidal thoughts. You're here to learn. You're going through tough times. Yes, sometimes they seem insurmountable, but there's always an end to your troubles. In this great book, Memoirs of a Su Suicide by Yvonne Piera, they were told, look, these group of suicides were brought to this you know, kind of hospital, and each one of them was told, there was no reason for you to commit suicide. The, the, the cure or the, the end of your trial was coming, either the next week, the next month, or the next year. It will always end. And that's why I want to emphasize you know, so much that the spirit world is all around us. And our guardian angels take no pleasure in seeing a struggle since they have all been there before, even though they understand that at times we need the suffering presented to us. But within the confines of letting us survive and learn from our trials, the spirit world actively guides and helps us. During and after birth, we are looked after by the spirit world. In the book, Missionaries of the Light, another Andre Louise inspired book, psychographed by Chico Xavier, a well-known spiritist and medium from Brazil. We are told of the constant care we receive after death. This is a quote. Friends, and this is talking about uh, a, angel, a, a person. Oh, good evening. Good evening, Yvonne. So it says, friends, Herculano will remain at Sigmundo's side for seven years in his new reincarnation, at which time the reincarnation process will have been completed. After that period, his work as a friend and guide will be erased, or eased, I should say, not erased, for he will follow our brother at a distance. So, Herculano was a spirit who assisted during the conception and birth of this boy, Sig Sigmundo. And he shall stay constantly at his side for seven years through the most, you know, innocent and, you know, some, some people will say kind of dangerous areas of childhood because you never know what they could do. And did you, you know, so this shows you, did you ever wonder how babies can seemingly survive so many dangers in young life? Or how when young toddlers walk, looking backwards or anywhere but in front of them, they don't bump into more objects because they're influenced to avoid hazards by their spirit guardians. So it's very important to know that you are always surrounded. So as to the time period of seven years, this is explained to Andre Luis by his mentor. I, th I think everyone will find this very fascinating. This is what he says. You are aware that the human body has its vegetative activities per se, but you may not yet know that the perispiritual body, which gives form to the cellular elements, is strongly rooted in the blood. In the fetal organization, the blood elements are a gift from the mother's body. Soon after rebirth, a period of different assimilation of organic energies take place, where the reincarnated self, self is in quotes, rehearses the consolidation of its new experiences. And this, in this new cycle of physical life, it is only at age seven that it can begin to preside on its own over the blood formation process which is the basic element for the equilibrium of the perispiritual body, our pre-existent form. Blood, therefore, can be regarded as the divine fluid that underpins our activities on the physiological organism. It furnishes us with a symbol of the eternal movement of the sublime energies of the infinite creation. So what are they telling us? The process of reincarnation, even after birth, is complex for our spirit body to be connected to our physical body via the perispirit is a seven year long process. Not only does a child have the full time attention of their mother and father, but the spirit world supplies an invisible sentry, continuously protecting the young child, 
Life is more precious than we could ever imagine. Now, how do they assist us as adults? So not only children require support from the spirit world, we do too. Again, in the book, Missionaries of the Light, a young woman with small children lost her husband and was inconsolable. To supply her closure with her dead husband, the spirit world arranged a visit with him. During her sleep, when she could leave the bounds of her body, she, wasn't, she was able to talk to him and find out that he was safe in the spirit world. Since our spirits can communicate directly with other spirits during our slumber, we learn many valuable lessons and have various conversations with other spirits. Spirits, <clears throat> spirits who can communicate with us and our spirits, we can communicate with them during our slumber. So when we leave our body and we reside in the spirit world, we talk with other spirits. We are unable to retain exact memories of these encounters, but when we do awaken with general ideas and feelings, just like the widow did from her sleep when her aunt asked her if she actually believed she visited her husband in a dream the night before. And she said, why not, replied the widow without blinking. I still have the feeling of his hands on mine, and I know that God granted me such grace so that I could, not, so that I could find my strength again to work. Today I woke up totally refreshed and happy. I can face the future with new hope. I will make an effort and I shall be victorious. Oh, mommy, how your words console us, exclaimed one of the little ones with bright eyes. How I wish I could have been with you to listen to daddy in that wonderful dream. So that's from the book. They were helped. So remember this. When you have a dream, when you rise in the morning from a satisfying sleep and you feel good, you know, maybe you have a little figment of a dream, but it's like you feel good for no apparent reason. This is probably a residue from a nocturnal encounter you had in the spirit world. Are you, or when you leap out of bed, ready to tackle that problem, which had been bothering you for days, this could be the result of you finding out the solution while talking with your friends, our spirit guides in the spirit realm. If we search for an answer, it will come. The spirit world wishes to supply us with all the tools and inspiration required to prosper while we live on earth. They fully realize the day-to-day -day problems we encounter, complications which hinder our ability to absorb the lessons we need to learn. Therefore, like any good teacher who wishes their students to be successful, the spirit world gently pushes us to the correct solution. We have to listen to our conscience that governor of our behavior with years of experience in many lives and perform our deeds with moral clarity. Now, karma is real. Karma, karma, is, karma determines our lesson plan, our trials, our good things that happen and bad things that happen at the rest of our life and the next life. And so we have to remember when we perform good deeds, the resulting wave of our charity comes back at us, right? People who we have aided think caring thoughts about us. Spirits who assist the ones we materially help also notice our benevolence. A good example of this is found in the book Action and Reaction, again, psychographed by Chico Xavier. A spirit, a young man who died and is now watching over his mother, asked for a favor. This is what he says. My dear assistant, our Adelano is having financial problems. Because he helps others so much, he has been neglecting his own needs. He's always helping my poor incarnate mother. So I would ask for your help on his behalf. Just last week, my little mother didn't have the means to get medical treatment for my two sick brothers. So I went to him in tears and mentally begged him to help us out. He didn't hesitate for a second. Believing he was obeying his own impulses, he visited our house and gave my poor mother the money she needed. Dear assistant, for the love of Jesus, I beg you, don't forsake someone who has helped us so much. So here's the spirit pleading on behalf of an incarnate for the other spirits to help him. So sacrifices on our part for others should not be seen as opportunities, should be seen as opportunities to spread goodwill. The more goodwill we radiate, the more it will bounce back on us, enabling us to give even more. Doing well is not a zero-sum game. I give and you take. No, it's a positive feedback loop. 
with a rising crescendo of light and joy that surround us. The young man is answered by the assistant. This is what the assistant says. Don't worry. Adeleno is a, in a web of fraternal affinity that he has woven for himself. A lot of friends are supplying him with the resources he needs to faithfully carry out his caring task. Circumstances of a material nature will come together in his favor as a consequence of his acquired merit. So, as you can ascertain, the little things that happen in our life, a coincidence here, a random event there, brings us unexpected joy or a break to find a job that we always desired. It could all be in response to the charity that we have spread before. We are truly cared for by the spirit world. When we exhibit good behavior, our mentors wish to reward us to continue to do so. So before we reincarnate, we realize that we have much ground to cover to become better souls. Each little victory is one step closer to achieving our level of purity. Oh, hello, Jacob. I hope you are doing well also uh, this evening. So let me give you another example of good karma coming back. I talked to this one woman who, who had a, a really um, interesting NDE and it left her, it left her, it left her just completely without uh, strength for quite a while. And, and, but so she lost her job, but she still kept helping other people throughout this whole ordeal. And when I was talking to her, she says, well, we, you know, it's, things have gotten better because of that, because I was given a, um, a house to sit. It's on a park and I don't pay any rent. We just have to make sure that the park is protected. And I said, well, this is an example of karma coming back to you. The spirit world helped you get that house for free because you're still helping others. Another example is a postman had a uh, after death experience and it and after he retired he you know still helping other people helping other veterans with their experiences other post-traumatic syndrome experiences and so forth and in his nde he wrote you know i don't know i, I do this for free but somehow somehow things come by and i'm helped somehow i keep going and again that wasn't just random chance that's the spirit world. Let's, you know, as Carl Jung said, said, these are the synchronicities. These are things that happen to you, not out of happenstance, not out of just random chaos that happens. They happen to you because the spirit world is helping you. So remember these things. When these little things happen, you're being helped. So while it may seem that random conversations among spirits affect the level of assistance received, the, true, the truth of it is more revealing. Once again, our own concept of heaven as an Elysian field of bliss and comfort must be replaced by processes that are all too familiar to us. Let me explain. Once a person dies, they do not transform into a wise, benevolent saint. No, they are the same as before, with more intelligence and composed of different matter but thinking along the same lines as always. The process of watching over us and tracking our progress is the same as if we were in school. In some of the specialized colonies in the spirit world, such as Almas Emas, which is spirit sisters, they educate spirits and help them prepare for their next reincarnation. In the book, Sex and Destiny, another Henri Louise inspired tome, he is told how the students who were reborn are followed. Now, this should be very interesting to you. This is a quote from the book. All reincarnate individual, individualities connected with Almas Irmas have files containing the entire history of what they are accomplishing during their reincarnation. These files indicate not only the balance of the credits earned, but also the debts acquired. The balance can be examined at any time so as to, brought, to provide them with the help they deserve, depending on the loyalty they demonstrate in keeping the obligations they undertook and according to their willingness to contribute to the general good. What, what, what are they telling us? We're, they're telling us that we can't escape the fact that we must work for what we receive. This is the mundane secret of heaven awaiting us. Processes such as earning your living don't disappear with death. They are just altered, not to say they aren't changed for spectacularly better 
environment, right? Where we work in a desired location, not just to survive. But nevertheless, we can't escape the concept of debit and credit. To receive, you must give. For as Jesus said, it is always better to give than to receive. He knew what he was talking about. And there's joy in giving. And this is what you'll be doing in the spirit world. You'll find that joy, that that profession you want. In, it will be just a wonderful experience. So this, this isn't, wasn't just some remote ideal to make us better souls. It was practical advice on how to be successful in the spirit world. Now, the spirit world also helps us at our end of the life. For those of us that have accumulated a bounty of love during our path of life, the spirit world lends us and our family a hand in our final passage. In the book, Workers of the Life Eternal, Andre Louise is a member of a team that assists people to leave their physical bodies to return to life in the spirit world. The discarnated father of the old man, dying with his family around him, asked the other spirits to work with him to make his sons, his name, son was named Fabio, last hours pleasant. He asked the team. Now, so this father was discarnated. He was in the spirit world and he was helping. And he, there was also another team and he was help. He was asking the team, okay, this, you know, this is how we can help our son. This is what he tells the team. I know that Fabio's liberation will require a great deal of effort. However, I would like to help him with the last home worship in which he will physically participate at his family's side. As a general rule, a dying person's last wish are more affectionately recorded in the memory of those who remain behind. For that reason, I would really like to help him say a few words of advice and encouragement to his wife. So, after that, the team of spirits applied lengthwise passes over uh, Fabio's body, giving him the strength to participate at his last family gathering. Fabio tells his wife that he will always love her and that he, she should find comfort with another if that is her wish. He tells her that he will help her all he can while in the spirit room. Fa uh, Fabio's father puts his hands on Fabio's forehead and inspires Fabio to say this. I am happy to have this opportunity to exchange ideas with you alone according to the faith we share. Significant is the absence of our old friends who for so many years have accompanied us in our family prayers. There is a reason for that. We must talk about our needs, full of courage, but never forgetting about the upcoming farewell. These words of the apostle to the Gentiles are symbolic for our current situation. Just as there are mortal bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. And we can't ignore the fact that my mortal body will soon be returned to the welcoming earth. The common mother of the perishable forms in which we move about on the face of the globe. Something deep down tells me that this will perhaps be the last night that I will meet with you in this material body. At times when sleep blesses me, I feel that I am on the verge of the great deliverance. I can see that enlightened friends have been preparing my soul, and I am sure I will leave at the first opportunity. I believe all the necessary measures have already been taken to ensure our tranquility during these moments before the separation. In fact, I'm not leaving you any money, but I find comfort in knowing that we have built the spiritual home of our sublime union, and it will be an indelible source of reference for our everlasting happiness. What a beautiful thing to say. And he was inspired, Fabio was inspired to say that by his incarnate, uh, discarnated father. So Fabio dies peacefully that night, while his loving family is consoled and deeply touched by his last words. What better ending to a physical life than what Fabio and his spirit helpers were able to construct? He gave spiritual advice, joy, and hope in his final moments. There would be no need to second-guessing from his family about the end, no regrets of not saying the final farewell. For the last words are not about saying goodbye forever, but a message of see you soon. For at some point of time in the future, all shall be reunited in the real world, the domain of the spirits. The universe where we actually live, the vast, qual the vast majority of our time, for as we gain purity, we reincarnate less and less, until we come to the junction where to reincarnate is a choice, a mission gladly undertaken to have others as others have supported us before. So. Let's talk about, again, this is more, what I've said is just more of a very summary, right? This is the book, Spiritism 101, 
you can actually uh, download those download this for free go on my blog nwspiritism.com and then you can go on to my facebook page uh, spirits and spirit world around us go to the file section and spiritism 101 is on pdf you can download for free or if you'd like to on my blog hit the contact me and say brian please send me the pdf i will be happy to send you the pdf for this book again it's also if you like it on kindle it's like 99 cents on kindle and you can also find it on paperback too. So, but again, I just want to have everyone get this. This is this is this kind of to give you an idea of spiritism. So now let's give you an idea of how you can ascend in the spiritual hierarchy. I go much more in how to ascend and how to get your life so you feel comfortable in all situations and you you attain inner peace in my book, How to Live uh, Inner Peace Through Spiritism which uh, it should help you a lot. But let's go over more of, uh, with Spiritism 101, let's kind of just survey these things. And so you can get a taste of how Spiritism, if it's part of your life, you'd be surprised of how much it helps you, how, makes it, how it makes you feel less stress, more comfortable, more understanding of life's up and down. Okay, first, since Earth is a world of, of atonement. We must expect trials to repay our past wrongs. How should you handle these difficult lessons? Periods of life where nothing seemingly works and there are no ladders to escape. Alexander, Al, uh, Andre Louise's mentor from the book, Missionaries of the Light, gives the answer. Every plan that is drawn up in the higher sphere has the good and ascension as its basic objectives and every soul that reincarnates even one that finds itself in apparent desperate conditions has the resources to continue to improve therefore from that quote we should learn you should feel certain that you do have the means to successively climb out of whatever problem you're in there are two important actions you accomplish in any situation one is to remember the golden rule the basis of spiritism do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In fact, go further and actively help others if at all possible. The second is to maintain a positive attitude. In the book, Action and Reaction, again inspired by the spirit of Andre Louise, psychographed by Francisco C. Xavier, C. Chico Xavier. Andre wishes to know how utterly a utterly bad spirit has any chance to improve themselves when they're in a difficult trial on earth. This is the answer he receives. Let's imagine a monstrous criminal who has been segregated in a prison, accused of many crimes. He has been deprived of any of the freedom he would experience in an ordinary cell. Even in this condition, if he were to use his time in prison to willingly work for the well-being of the authorities and his fellow inmates, accepting with humility and respect the decisions of the law that is used to correct him, such attitude being the result of his free will to help or harm himself, in a short time, the prisoner would begin to attract the sympathy of those about him, thus advancing surely towards self-regeneration. So what we're being told is that the constraint of our faith is our own making. Certain events and trials we must live through. Our main freedom is our attitude and love for others during these times. The less we have to pay for past wrongs, the more freedom we gain to make choices to improve our souls. For those in the middle of painful trials, pray for help and forgiveness. Above all, maintain a positive attitude and outlook and love and care for others. By this, you have paid your debt and exceeded the expectations of those that created your plans. So, how do you build up the strength to survive future trials, right? That's important. Because I tell you, spiritism has helped me go through future trials much easier than I would have beforehand. I would have been nervous and stressed and I would have lashed out and I would have thought bad primitive thoughts of revenge or hatred and boy once you're free of that it's just so much better so let me explain as in school when there are periods between classes there are periods between trials and there are times to learn these are the best times to actually learn about spiritism participate in charity work and ponder why you have gone through the occurrences in your life so far in the book, Action and Reaction, Andre learns about a man who at 40 committed suicide. 
He learns that years after suffering in the spirit world, the man is reincarnated. Henri is told that as part of the man's trial, he'll have an overwhelming temptation to commit suicide again at the exact age in which he forsook his responsibilities the previous time. So think carefully when you have great events in your life. Contemplate about how you must have made the wrong decision in a previous existence and what your steps you can take to improve. Andre asks how this unfortunate man can resist the lure a second time. This is what he's told. If this man has not saved up renewing and educational resources through learning and the practice of fraternity so as to overcome the inevitable crisis, it will be very hard for him to avoid committing suicide again because despite being reinforced from the outside, temptations have their starting point within us, and they feed us on of what is already there. So this is not a new trial, but a chance for a retest. If you have studied hard and learned to live with others as you should, you will pass the test. After you live through it, rejoice in the knowledge that you won't have to live through that type of event ever again. Our destiny, our course of study, and our school of earth is not supposed to be tranquil. If, if it was, you wouldn't be able to advance. Take comfort that which you believe are tough lessons are nothing compared to what the truly filled spirits must experience. Pray for those who are in the middle of justly difficult lessons. Learn to travel through years with a positive outlook. Graduation from the school of life is indeed death, which you fully passed all your classes and could mean you are finished with earthly universities. But at least the reward for good grades in most classes is an even more fascinating life the next time in an exciting and fulfilling job in the spirit world before it, it takes us back to the campus. So what have we learned in our survey of Spiritism 101? So what I've tried to present to you is the basic precepts of Spiritism. First, in our normal state, we are in mortal spirits. Second, at our present states of life as a spirit, we are relatively immature, hence we are carefully guided, think nursery school, elementary school, we're watched, measured, and loved all the time. When at Whatever mess we make of our life, we are still loved. Expectations are low and most of us barely pass. In order to teach us to get along with all the other spirits in the universe, we must have a minimum amount of training. The training, suffer, suffering through successive lives and various circumstances may seem harsh to us, but in perspective of eternity or billions of years, depending on how you like to think of it, a span of 50 to 90 years on earth for each set of courses is less than the amount of time you place a two-year-old in a corner after a temper tantrum. Are you a spiritist yet? I don't know, even though indirectly I have called to you and me, of course, immature, and I'm still rel relatively ignorant, isn't there a sense of momentary relief? Finally, most of you out there have the answer of how in the heck you could have done so many things wrong with your life. Thirdly, as part of our training, our lives on earth follow a script. The major events are planned. Our actions, our reactions, our choices within those acts are the factors in which we are graded. We are expected to learn from our mistakes, and demonstrate our newfound talent in the next life when we are shown new obstacles and new opportunities. When we have wronged others, our script sends us onto a stage where we, where we in turn get to play the part of the victim. Seeing both sides of the story provides us with the rounding we require. Don't we do that with children all the time? Don't we explain to them when they're mean with someone how that other person must, fe must have felt? We go through the same thing. The milestones of our life is not all payback. As children, we are sent on field trips to absorb new sights and sounds. We too are provided new circumstances of learning. All that I have written in this book, Spiritism 101, barely scratches the surface. For example, I have an entire book on how to explore your destiny, another on the many facets of reincarnation. I have the introductions of my book at the end of this book of this book. If you buy this book, you'll see uh, introductions of some of my other books. And I, I think all of you, if you want, you can dive deeper into the meaning of your life. There are so many types of experiences we must have in order to fulfill our graduation requirements. 
such as one life spent in the lap of luxury to determine whether we're able to maintain our humility and kindness towards others, or like so many, become an irrational tyrant because we can, right? That's a big mistake. If if what I have talked about or what you read in Spiritism 101, I invite you to continue seeking and learning about Spiritism. Your life will benefit. You will reach a mountain top from which you will be able to look down at your life from a position of certainty, safe in the awareness that whatever hurdles you encounter are merely small bumps in the road to your eventual perfection. So I want to thank everyone for listening tonight. Again, Please, this is all about spiritism. It's all about Alan Kardec, the spirits book. I would say always start here. I have, go to my website on my right-hand navigation. I have books that can help you. If you don't want those, there's plenty of books on the EDICI bookstore, directly psychographed by mediums from spirits. They're very interesting. I write my books with a little bit different perspective and I accumulate I accumulate things and basic topics and tell about what many spirits have told, many spirits as mediums what it means and how it can help you. So I'm just trying to lay everything out for you. I'm not trying to push anything onto you, but to give you the resources that you can learn from what you want to learn. And then also, if you can tell other people about Kardec Radio. Oh, I forgot to say Kardec Radio is also on an Android and iOS phone, the Apple phone. You can download that app for free. I am talking. Oh, thank you, Jacob. I am uh, speaking every Sunday night, again, at 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. It, it will be on Kardec Radio. It doesn't cost you anything. It's 24 hours a day, Spiritist programs. It's always something playing. Um, a lot of people, more and more people every month I see are listening to me here on Kardec Radio. People are, come, are joining the YouTube channel and, of course, our Facebook site, Spiritism, the Spirit World Around Us. And please come to my blog if you want more information. And I truly believe... The more you learn about spiritism, the more you'll understand your life. You'll understand other people's lives around you. You'll understand why it's good to listen to your conscience, why it's good to let the little things that bug you with people, let them roll off your back and love them instead. You will be a happier, more contented, less stressed person. So I want to thank everyone and say God bless to everyone tonight. God bless.